Welcome back to Let's Overthink This. I am really excited about today's announcement. We are on the property near Joshua Tree and getting super close to breaking ground and building here. You might have seen our well drilling video. I have a couple of those from about a year and a half ago, and that was one of the very first steps because you can't build out here legally, permitted, without your own water. So we did that, and then between then and now, we've gone through a lot of architecture, and planning and plan check and permitting to get to where we are ready to break ground for a tiny home, which is gonna go over there, and that workshop accessory building, which is gonna go over here. So over the next six, eight months, we'll see how long it takes. We're gonna take you through the build process. I'll be doing as much of the work myself as I can, but either way, I hope you subscribe and come along for the journey. Uh, I think it's gonna be quite, quite interesting. Let's go to an overhead view and talk about the site plan. I'm not going to get into the design details this time or kind of why we decided to do this instead of building like a full house as an example, but I just want to show you where things are in relation to each other so we can talk about the surveying and the step we're about to do. So here I've overlaid the uh, site blueprint. On the right here, you can see the tiny house. It's literally a tiny house, very small, about 280 square feet. Little bathroom and a kitchenette. Over here, you see the much larger accessory building. There's an enclosed area that we'll put an office in and kind of a mechanical room, and then an outside covered area that's uh, just covered but not enclosed. Apart from this is a septic tank and a leach field. I recently had a survey company come out and put survey flags for the corners of these buildings that are blinking right now on the screen. Let's go down to ground level and talk about what those are. I'm standing where the tiny home is gonna be, and you'll notice there's like a mess of survey flags. What are these? Well, the next step is grading. Grading is essentially preparing the ground to put the foundation on it. Because there's a couple problems with the way this is right now. First of all, it's not level. It's sloped from the top here down to the bottom here. Um, second, there's a lot of kind of stuff on the top of the, the earth, which we obviously need to scrape off and, and do something with. And also we can't just pour concrete on top of this because it's not compacted. Over time it might settle, that would crack our slab. We're in an earthquake area, so bad things could happen there with maybe settling of the ground. Um, if big rains come along, maybe it would sweep part of the foundation away. These flags tell the grader exactly where he needs to be to do his work so that when I need to place the home, I've placed it on top of where his, his, uh, his compacted ground is. But why are there so many survey flags? I'm squatting here where one of the corners of the building is, and it's just a simple rectangle, so there's just four corners. Now, if I ask the surveyor to place the survey markers for where this is supposed to be right here on the corners, when the grader comes and uses his heavy equipment to excavate out and to recompact, there's no way this marker would still be here. He's just going to obliterate it and I'd never find it again, which means when I had to do the excavation for the footings and do the pad, I wouldn't have any of those official markers anymore. So what he's asked for is a 10-foot offset, meaning that marker is 10 feet from the corner of the building and that one also 10 feet from the corner of the building so that he can be grading out five feet and we still have a pretty good shot that when he's all said and done with his work those 10 foot offset markers are still there and I can set up string lines and batter boards and have nice markers for where I should be excavating and and setting up for the foundation. It would be fair to ask why we need these survey markers at all. We're in the middle of nowhere. Can't we just pick a spot to put our buildings and just build them there, right? I mean, that's a valid question. Um, so yes and no. We have a lot of options for where we put our buildings, but there are some considerations that become very, very important. Um, you take those considerations into account when you plan and you make the blueprints and you submit them for permits, but then it's very important when you get there in reality that you put the building where you said you were going to put it. So some examples of things that become important are setbacks. So there are lot lines, and the, not only lot lines, but there might be roads that you have, or there might be easements, there might be utilities, there's things you need to have a certain distance or clearance from. And again, if you took those into account to get your permit passed, um, that's step one. Step two is making sure you didn't just build the building where you weren't supposed to, because that could be very bad. They can actually make you tear down the building if you put it in a place that you don't have a right to put a building. Another consideration is we have the well, which is over there, and we have a septic tank uh, because we're off grid, and that septic has to be a certain distance from it. I think it's 100 feet. So in our case, we're fine. We put it out something like 120, 130 feet away. But again, you want to make sure that you're actually putting things where they're supposed to be. One more, um, you'll notice there's Joshua trees all around. Joshua trees are protected and you can't just bulldoze through them. Uh, and so we've chosen two locations where no Joshua trees are disturbed at all. We had a survey done and we made sure that 
everything is where it's supposed to be. Not only are we not having to move any Joshua trees, which usually kill them, um, but we don't even come close to any of them when we're doing the grading work. This is not a comprehensive list, but there's plenty of reasons why it's worth having a survey company out and mark where the building is supposed to be so you can kind of align everything and, uh, and do it right. I know building corner markers aren't the most exciting thing for you all, but we're super excited about what it represents. It's a dream starting to become real. If you want to follow along our journey, please like, subscribe, and tune in next time for grading on Let's Overthink This.